I was the gunner. Bareback riding's first event, I was so jacked, I had a good horse. Crawled over the chute, and as I ran my hand into my rigging, I was thinking, this is it, but it's Braxton, <laughs> it's Braxy's time to shine, you know, it's time to, and uh, everything was really good, calm, collective, and as I nodded my head um, in the chute to, to tell them to open the gate, that horse reared kind of out of there, reared straight back, and her back feet slipped out from underneath her, and that's when I, I heard a shotgun. In northeastern Utah, along Highway 191 and in the middle of the Uinta and Uray Indian Reservation lies the city of Roosevelt, a farming and ranching community and home to Braxton Nielsen. What do you think, there, old panel 10? Braxton grew up in a household that emphasized the importance of hard work and determination. My dad instilled, installed that into us from playing sports, basketball, football, baseball. You learn how to fail, you get back up, and you, you with struggles you become greater. From a young age I've told them and, and probably especially Braxton that we're born to succeed and that it's up to us to, to make that happen. While his siblings played football, volleyball and danced, Braxton fell in love with rodeo. Come on Braxton! And bareback riding became his event. First time I rode a bucking horse, I fell in love with it. Basketball went out the window, football, that's all I wanted to do was be a world champion bareback rider. There's just a light and an excitement that you, you could see he loved it. And you knew he'd be successful just because of the passion that's there. Even though my mom says she didn't want me to rodeo, she's my biggest fan. In just a few years, Braxton quickly climbed the standings with the hope of making it to the national finals in Las Vegas. Filer, Idaho, August 31st, 2017. It was just another rodeo, another day in the office for me. You know, rodeoing as a professional athlete, that it was game day. It was time to shine, man. And I drew a really good horse. Uh, this horse's name was Sozo. Um, great horse. It's been in the national finals a handful of times. And I mean, it, I was excited for the opportunity to get on it. She's a great bucking horse. Um, and half the points go to the horse, half the points go to the cowboy, you know? So I thought, this is a good matchup. I'm gonna win this sucker tonight. As soon as the gate opened, Sozo reared, slamming Braxton into the rail, causing him to lose feeling in his legs and fall to the ground. I've been taught from my dad from a young age, if you get bucked off, you get back on, or you get bucked off, you hit the dirt, you jump back up, brush yourself on, you know, cowboy up, be tough. I hit the dirt and I tried to get up and my lower half didn't want to cooperate. I, I knew then something was was wrong. Braxton was flown to the University of Utah Hospital. I broke my back, I broke the T12 L1, um, twisted my spinal cord and it pinched it se severely. Of course, I just, you know, sobbed. Me and Rick sat there for a good 20 minutes and just cried because well, here we have an amazing son who's extremely, extremely athletic in anything he wants to do, he can, you know, he does. And, and it is just devastating. And it's just, you know, it's not my Braxton. Braxton was paralyzed from the waist down. He was given a less than 5% chance to walk again. I remember, man, I remember still this day that my dad coming in and talking to me and saying, hey buddy, uh, <laughs> me and my dad are pretty close. And I, I, I couldn't sit up in my bed, and I yelled at my dad, hey dad, need some help. He had asked about his legs, and I just jokingly, because we have a good relationship, I said, oh bud, they had to take your legs. And, and his eyes got big, and I had to hurry and just slap him on the chest and tell him, hey, I'm just kidding buddy, you're, you're okay. And he said, hey Brax, uh, you have your arms. And I still, he started pointing out, I have my eyes. You have a breath, your, your heart's beating. Put his hand on my chest, mine, and just, you feel that? I finally calmed down, yeah, I feel it. He said, hey, you're still alive. Had a kid B, had a kid B. Get it, kid. I shot B. As he was taught from an early age, Braxton refused to stay down. In just a few months, Braxton walked out of the hospital. Weeks later, he was back on a horse. How are you, man? How are you? Now. He's back into rodeo. 
as a competitive team roper. Oh, front leg. I used to have to strap my toes in with rubber bands and I've got to where I can put my feet in the stirrup. Yeah, there's still some numbness. Sometimes I'll blow a stirrup. Um, the hard part is when I throw, being able to react and sit back up straight. Um, it takes me just a second, but I'm still able to do it. Just gotta find a little different ways to, to get it done. Braxton still deals with challenges, including a slight limp. I call it God-given swagger now. <laughs> No, but I still have, you know, my, my muscles don't fire normal. I still have a lot of disabilities that aren't normal, but again, it's a miracle, and I'm gonna take the miracle that I have and make the most of it. Before the accident, he could do back fit, flips, front flips on the wakeboard. And we've been down to Lake Calvis this past weekend, and he actually did a back flip and landed it. And I'm just like, you know, how you're just, nobody does that. I mean, who does that? You know, Braxton's always been one to inspire all of us. So with a little support, and uh, you know, we've always said 10% circumstance, 90% attitude. And Braxton had the attitude to get over anything. An attitude he learned early on in the home and continues to apply today. In Roosevelt, Jake Edmonds, Talking sports.